uh, gentlemen, as we move into a few questions, uh, this may be information that you did cover in your presentation. Perhaps it might seem uh, repetitive. Sometimes our attendees just want us to drill down a little bit more for them. And feel free, any or all of you, to respond to these uh, questions that are coming in. Uh, the first one, I want to go back, to Richard, uh, to some of what you were talking about in that earlier uh, segment there. And uh, as we move forward, do you think any of the states will consider increasing or otherwise changing their sales use tax economic nexus thresholds in the coming future. Uh, thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, we have seen a few states tinker with their thresholds. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, Georgia, they lowered theirs from 250 down to 100 last year. I, I think I just saw an article today that uh, uh, Tennessee legislature had lowered their $500,000 threshold. I don't know if that's gone all the way through the, I don't think the governor signed that yet, but uh, so it seems like there's, you know, they're probably more apt uh, for states to, that are above 100,000 to lower that threshold down to 100,000. That seems to be a popular concept, even though, you know, some of the larger states like New York, California, uh, do have those high thresholds. I guess the theory behind that would be that uh, if states can move toward making their laws more user-friendly and easier for Internet sellers to comply with them, then they, they ought to be able to lower that threshold. I'm sure the business community would probably push back on that and say, well, you guys got a long ways to go before you uh, make them easier. But uh, so, yeah, I'd say if probably, if anything, there's probably pressure to lower those thresholds. Excellent. Any thoughts from Stephen or Michael before we move on to the next question? No, I don't. Okay. Nothing from me. Okay, so Stephen, I want to go now to your presentation. A uh, uh, question coming in here from an attendee on your opinion. Do you think it's difficult to persuade a taxpayer to go through the VDA process and uh, how how do you persuade them? Well, initially there is uh, that uh, inertia, and they don't want to come forward and pay the tax, but then you have to show them what the benefits are, and the benefits being that you can eliminate this older tax, and, um, you know, it's kind of picking your poison. You can eliminate this older tax, and um, you can control the presentation, for the for the look back period, uh, you know, hopefully three years, and then this is your entree to get you to comply. So it's really a, a patient education process um, to persuade them because it, initially it, they just think they can put their head in the uh, in the sand, and, and the reality is putting your head in the sand um, just makes the problem worse because it continues the tax continues to accrue. And accrue and accrue and get bigger and bigger, not because of interest, but because you, you, you remain out of compliance that much longer. So you just have, it's a, it's an education and a hand holding process. 